Just want to let you lot know that if you're watching this clip on the Fozcast YouTube channel, the full episode is now available to watch exclusively on Spotify. And it's free. Come on. Question for Fozzie here. Um, <laughs> I could answer this for you. If you weren't a goalkeeper, what position would you be? He wouldn't, I don't think. No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say that if, if let's say that your outfield ability matched your goalkeeping ability, yeah. where would you like to play? Um, I would have liked to have been a defender. I would have liked to have been a um, a centre back. I think because um, I, yeah, I like to get, I like to get stuck in as well. I'd like to be. I'm a, I would be a bit like you, Robbo, where the the, I would I would relish the physical battle every day. It would be don't get me wrong, the tactics are brilliant and all that. But I would I would relish every day. It would be an opportunity to better my opposition, whoever that attacker was that day. It would be I want to get the better I've of him. I've seen you get stuck in. Are we allowed to say that? Have we said that before about the cough connection? Um, no, probably not. But it's fine. Cov Connection, by the way, is a local kind of like six aside in Coventry. Like, in Coventry, um, and we used to play as kids, didn't we? It would be like a it was four or side so, or five so or side. Four or side. So when you were at Stoke, yeah. a young professional at Stoke, Ben was our ringer. So yeah. he'd come and play. He'd go in goal. No, sometimes I'd play but, outfield. No, as you'd well. get bored. Yeah, you'd get bored. So, rush goalie. Yeah, rush yeah. goalie. Yeah, spider. Go. And I remember the one time we played a local t- Coventry team, and it, it's, it's in Coventry. It's a spicy, <laughs> spicy league. And I remember this one time we're playing this team that are particularly like volatile, yeah. right? And you are flying into oh, tackles. It's lovely, mate. It's lovely. But uh, it's same as you. When when you're on that pitch, it's. They're trying to hurt me, so I will try and hurt them. And it's just the way that it goes. And it's, it's a mutual hurt off. And who hurt who that day? Well, nobody actually hurt me because I did it to myself. But I did actually, that was the day when I did my cruise shirt when I was 19 years old. Um, <laughs> but it was off season. <laughs> and we, oh, yeah, I did, yeah. Oh, and we dear. were playing and nobody was near me. I think I've passed the ball to somebody, turned to run and I, my knees just popped. Honestly, out of absolutely nowhere as well, wouldn't it? I just found yeah. a pop in my knee. I was like, that's not right. My knee just blew <laughs> you up. You just ran out the net. Swallowed up like out. crazy and that was it. Did Terry, my Terry, your dad gave you a... Yeah. And then on Sky Sports, it said young goalkeeper has um, done his cruise ship playing tennis with yeah, his brother. Yeah, spin a lie and say we did it playing tennis. Oh, there you go. Right, okay. Um, <clears throat> next question... This is a good one for you both. Um, we'll start with you, Paul. What impact does it have on the players when the manager of your club is changed very frequently? Um, yeah, it can be obviously not ideal. The stability, your player, um, working under different managers, different philosophies, different formations all the time. It's Yeah, it, it doesn't help. So as a player, though, all you can do is do what's best for you and that's to play the position that you play and, and, and do as well as you can. And make the manager's decision hard to, to sort of take you out of the team. But yeah, it, it can be very dis, um, disruptive, no stability and, 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 and obviously not really much identity within the club if they're going to keep doing that. Right, OK, this has come from one of our, our mates, Scotty Powell, young, young man. Um, on the back of that question, Ben, do the players, look, looking when you were at Watford, for example, there was obviously a big churn of manager, does it get to a point where the players are standing there going... We've just had a new manager. He wants to play a different formation. Mm. What chance have we got? Do you start questioning? Yeah, a little above? bit. A little bit. I think it's um, you get you get especially at Watford. You got so used to it happening that you just knew it was inevitable, basically. Which which in turn is a bad place to be because you knew that that manager, if he got off to a bad start, would be under pressure straight away, and then it would just it would alter the dynamics of how the football club would work. Um, but as soon as a new manager is coming in, and you're looking at the rumor mill, you're looking at the betting odds, all that kind of stuff, you start trying to find out what that new manager is about. So as soon as you know there's a guy that's a favourite for it, you might look at some of the other players and say, oh, you played with him. What's he like? And then you would find out, you'd get a get a sort of a gauge of what that guy's about. And most of the time, all you want to know is, is he a good guy? And what day off does he give you? <laughs> right. <laughs> does he give you some day the first two and questions? Gonna, and is he going to give me the, the fair opportunity that I deserve as a player? Yeah. That's okay. what you look at. Right. We're going to do a couple more. Um, obviously, the good thing about this is, is we can give contact. You guys can give. Can we contact. do a part two to this, by the way? Because yeah. I feel like there are about seven billion more questions. Yeah, I think that we could unearth yeah. and, and actually try and explain away a bit more as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, for sure. Right, last couple of questions, uh, lads. What was your go-to pre-match meal, Paul? Uh, I was quite boring actually. I used to just have cereal, a bit of toast with <laughs> peanut butter on it. That was my nice. pre-match. Yeah, I, I, I never wanted to feel. I never wanted to feel too heavy going okay. into a game. After the game, I'd then fill myself up. 
Was that something you always, was that always your pre-match? Always. Um, maybe when I was younger, I used to have a bit of spaghetti bolognese with the sauce and that on it. But then the sauce become for me a little bit too acidy when I was okay. playing. Mm. So when you when you were running around, you could then feel it. Like when you burped, you could feel the, like, the, the sauce. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't want that feeling while I was playing. So I just felt, right, I'm going to go on to a little bit of cereal now with a bit of milk and then some toast. And then, yeah, I just felt right as rain doing that. It's, it's funny, outfield players, like, it's a genuine concern. They have to be really mindful of what they're going to take for pre-match meal. Pre-match meal is typically three hours before, isn't it? So if it's three o'clock kickoff, you're all sitting down at 12 o'clock to have your pre-match meal. Uh, again, for outfield players, they, they genuinely have to use it as fuel to get through the game. Goalkeepers... It's not about that for us. We we can genuinely just eat what we want. So I it, I, I would change every week. It didn't really matter to me. One of my favourites towards the end would be um, you'd always have chicken breasts, and I'd I'd just make like a, a chicken sandwich. I'd put a bit of like cheese on it, a bit of uh, tomato ketchup, butter my bread, and it would be basically a chicken chicken and cheese sandwich. And it would be it'd be beautiful because the chicken was warm as well. Um, but for goalies, we can we can eat or drink whatever we wanted basically. Fair play. Right. Okay. Last question. Which team has the the kind of biggest fortress. So, you know, when oh. you um, hear people referring to it, as, it's a fortress. So yeah. Old Trafford back in the day. So uh, out, over your careers, what team did you feel like Ooh. you were going to a fortress? And that question's from uh, Routledge. Um, I would probably say Anfield. Yeah, that's just the because, that just, in, just yeah. because of the actual historic meaning to the club itself with you walk down the tunnel, you touch the badge, you go out, you, you, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. As soon as they Goose sing, bumps. flip me, yeah. it's like you want to join in singing the song, <laughs> yeah, don't you? I think I did a few times. Eh? <laughs> don't you, you <laughs> do, don't you? Yeah, I think I did a few times. <laughs> you never walk alone and all yeah, that. I'm si I'm, look, you're muttering it to yourself going, what are you doing? Don't yeah. get caught Looking on camera. Looking around at 50,000 like, people whilst you, you're muttering it. Do you it. touch the, so the, the, when you're saying about the, the tunnel, there's a, um, this is Anfield, is it? Yeah. This is Anfield, Sign. yeah. And a lot of the home players touch it. Do they the all touch it. Do the away players touch it? I think some some did. Yeah, some did, yeah. Just just out of respect. Yeah? Because it's it's just a, go, a great ground to go and play at. Fozzy? Yeah, that, Liverpool was the first one that popped in my head. I, I would have said Anfield. Um, the, the, to be fair, there are. There's a few. Um, Newcastle is always incredible. It's, I, I think it's that wow factor when you walk out the tunnel and you look around and it just seems so ginormous and filled with fans. So Liverpool gives you that... Um, Newcastle, without doubt. Everton used to really kind of... Yeah, intimidating uh, as intimidating. well. Intimidating, Because they're on top yeah. of you. That, that's, that's a, Highbury that's was another yeah. one as well. Yeah, the old Highbury. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even White Hart Lane, like, mate. White out. Hart Lane, the old White Hart Lane, when Spurs were in their pomp with Harry Kane and Deli Alley and all them boys when they were going through a really good spell. Oh, we're forgetting West Ham, mate. Oh, mate. Come on. Upton old Park. school West Ham. Upton, Upton, Upton oh, Park. Well, that's yeah. got to be one that, of the most intimidating that was places as well. That was a really tough place. Disgusting Just because their fans are lively. Yeah. But the atmosphere, what a place to go and play football. Play. Well, as, as somebody who worked on the Millwall coaching staff, what's it like playing at the Den? Yeah, the new Den is yeah. obviously a little bit different to the old Den. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, like you say, the fans with the way the game's changed now, then they're, they're not probably as, as bad as what they were. It's yeah. more of the younger generation that now go to the games there. So The old guard have gone, so it's not as, uh, as yeah, volatile. Not, not as volatile. Obviously, you're still going to get the, the odd word flying your way. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But that was... That's the norm, really, isn't it? Yeah. But, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's as, as intimidating as what it has been over the years. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We hope you enjoyed this clip of the Fozcast. If you would like to watch the full episode, it is now available exclusively on Spotify for free.